a little jump kick right there? Yeah. Just fishing on a, on a weekday. I feel like it's been a couple of years. It's my best friend, Craig. Yeah. Pumping gas and catching bass. Ready to hit it hard today. It's my new life's motto. There's nothing more my best friend Craig loves than some top water bites. Amen. I mean, we've got most of our top water dreams tied on right now. We're gonna see if it it takes place. We are in we are in the prime time of it. I'm excited. Uh, Craig's never been to this lake before. We've got you know reeds, grass, clear water. It is post spawn. It is time to get those blue blue. <laughs> I'm so excited about today, y'all. Conditions are looking overcast. Top water, oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. There are some pads that are starting you know to what? surface. Popper? Well, you know what? I think they'll smash them. Plop, plop. Do it. I, I, got a, uh, I got a plop bait tied on. Oh my gosh, it just looks so good. Got grass growing out here at 10 foot. I don't know if we're gonna get them on top water, but man, at this moment in time, it just feels right. Oh yeah, this is gonna be golden. <clears throat> I'm mic'd up, so you got, you got a hot mic. Woo, look at we got some, we got some daggum top cruisers looking for somebody to just come up and clap cheeks <laughs> full cheek clap on this thing i'm thinking there's probably going to be some fish you know cruising these outer grass lines post spawn but if we can't get this going then we'll uh oh we'll, we'll go up into the uh into the reeds and get dirty there's, there's always uh shallow shallow fish you know there's like two classes of fish after the spawn some just stay up there they eat bluegills and some chase shad out on the deeper stuff i mean you all i've noticed you always prefer the shad chasers are they bigger out here um it's just a it's a larger amount of fish i feel like most of them uh We'll, we'll follow that shad program if there are a lot of shad. You can always go up in dirty, shallow water in the heat of summer. And if there's bluegills around, if there's shade, you know, you got docks, whatever, there, there's, there's gonna be fish. I got some WD-40 in here if you wanna give that thing a squirt. <laughs> it's probably been a minute. It's probably been a couple of years since you've squirted that thing. There you go, bud. There he is. Get him. Oh, oh he spit it. I didn't get a great hook. Ooh. Ooh. I can tell. That was a decent one. Yeah, you know what? It might be more of like a popper situation. Yeah, I think so, man. Not a great hook set. Wind was. It was pretty, dude. Yeah. yeah. Wind was it was. Anyway. Like you were struggling a little bit. I can't. I really can't say anything because I haven't had a bite. Get him, buddy. Slow. That's the deal. Yeah. Let it sit. Okay. I'm putting on a popper. Yeah. Can't stand it. So at this point, Craig has had two good bites on a frog, just letting it sit. So I switched over to the blooper, throwing it on uh, on braid. And I'm just gonna let it sit over these little grass spots. Just gotta work it slow. And the walking style bait, you can still catch them on it, but that will start to get much better when the water gets a little warmer. And it, that's, I pretty much put down the popper style baits after June. There you go. Get that one in, Craig. I'm not sure what's going on. What are you doing? Because I just I don't know what's going on with Craig back here. He's gotten like five bites and these fish are just somehow getting off. I haven't missed a 
frogfish in 2007. I'm about to pick up a worm, dude, because I haven't, I haven't had a single sniffy. Can you do me a favor? Just roll Craig. Old time sake, best time sake. Do you have a small popping frog? Do you have a small black one? Yes, I do. I'll throw a small black one. And then I bet you the first eight casts you get. Oh, just had one on it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Craig. Hey, this is how you, oh, that's, you net him? that's how you do it. You need to net him? No, no, we got it. That's a nice fish right there, buddy. That is a nice one. We got him. We got him on that glass rod. Hopefully, he's not going to get too crazy Ooh, on that's me. That's a big boy. It's a big boy. You got troubles in him too. Look at this beautiful fish. <laughs> God, I love that bite. Was awesome. <laughs> yeah, he was. He was on it, and then he came up and popped it, dude. So cool. Oh, we got it. Got a of He's got it. Ah, come here, buddy. That's how. Oh, look how beat up that fish is. That is beat. Is that Ooh. a post spawn? He looks awful. Wow, bam! Holy cow! That you know, that's my only bite that I've had today. Quality. But it is a quality bite. Five pounder top water. I saw a boil behind the bait, and I was like, oh, there's one on it, and I just let it sit. Let it sit there. That's the thing with the with the blooper. You gotta let it sit. And then wah bam, literally you can see the bones in its tail. It's been spawning so hard. I'm gonna get back back in the water really quick. These fish are still up here either guarding fry or they're chasing bluegill around. And this bloop, bloop, I don't know if you guys have ever heard, uh, if it's real still, you'll sometimes hear bluegill popping little bugs and, and th little things off the surface and it's this little sound. And I think that's what makes this so attractive. Of course you got, you know, dying shad and all that, but this right here for me, post spawn, like late April, early May, all through May really, um, it's, it's the top water to go to, like I mentioned, so. That was awesome. That's how you do it, Craig. You get, yeah. you just you get them in. I, I don't know. I don't know what to say. Look at the bluegill up there. You see them? See them real shallow? Oh, yeah. I mean, they're like up there, mm -hmm. dude. And I feel like most of your bites, you've only been like three, three feet or less from the reeds. So these big bass will hang around and get their revenge on the bluegill that have been eating their eggs all spring. There you go, bud. See, like, I don't know. It's like little tweener grabs, you know? Give him, give him that one Mississippi, two Mississippi. I, so I tried that on the other one. Looks like he's guarding his fry. See that, oh, see yeah. the fry that he's guarding? Hopefully you guys can see this, but there's a bass, you know, there's about a two pound bass. He's following this, this ball that looks like little shrimp, but those are all tiny little bass. There's a couple of hundred of them. And that's the male bass and he is guarding the fry. So he's coming under the boat right here to say hello. Hello, how you doing? He's going right back to his fry. So in this situation, if you throw like a weightless plastic or something over, over that fry ball, you know, and then that fish is not aware of you, uh, oh, there's another ball right here. It is going to eat that. And th that's a lot of times what happens with top water too. You get it in that area and they'll come up and they'll smack it. You may not see that there's fry there, but it's a uh, male bass that's garden fry. And I think some of the ones that you've missed today, Craig, have been those uh, those fry garters. Probably, yeah. You know, they're just, they're just kind of swiping it. It's fun to be able to see these fish, but I think it's gonna make things a little more difficult. Oh, see that? oh yeah, buddy, get him. Is that a gar? I see a gar, but it looked like a bass. Oh, weird. It's right in that shade line. Oh, I got him. Good one? Nice. That is a nice fish. Oh, here that we go. Is good. Heck yeah, bud. That's out there a little ways. 
Long paws too. Yeah, see man, like that's long, long paws. The bite is really interesting. Nice oh, paws. he's barely hooked. I'm gonna try boat flipping. Here we go. Oh, that's a nice fish. Healthy. Heck healthy. yeah, that one is healthy. <clears throat> that's like the the opposite of the other one. Barely, the other one was double mouthful, beat to hell. That was barely. This good. one's beautiful. Just oh. got a little bit of a stress mark on its tail. Otherwise, gorgeous fish. I'd say two and three quarters. Three pounder a month ago. Nice fish right there, guys. Top water fish. We're kind of, you know, we're off that morning by it's 9.30. But we still got these, uh, these fish that are cruising these bluegill beds. So we got a big flat out in front of us. We'll try the top water, but we've been talking like we're missing, we're really missing the the majority of of the bites by not throwing like a weightless bait like a a dart or a lunker log out here but it's just so much more fun getting the top water strikes let's be honest hmm. oh that's a bass is that a big one that looked pretty good size my friend pretty good. i'm gonna let you uh I was really patient. recast there Oh, yeah. There we go. Off already. Going slow, slow, slow. Is the right there? Yeah. Right on the edge of this grass. It's a lengthy pause, too. Golly, buddy. Barely hooked. Yeah, see? They're swiping yeah, at it, huh? they are. Would they hit the worm harder, you think? Yeah. I, I think they'll just, you know, be more apt to bite it. That's a super healthy fish though, right there. Really healthy. Third fish on the, on the blooper. It's like you're throwing a walking bait, you're ch -ch 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 -ch. You're just constantly looking at it. You know, you're checking out the action, make, you know, making sure like I'm going over the right thing right here. And with the blooper style and the frog style, when it is slow like this, you almost just like pop it and you're like, hey, what's going on? Do you, uh, what did you do last night? Hey, what is that? Is that that a and then, wah! You almost have to disconnect yourself with the bait just to not work it. Yeah. Also, your line is really important. You do not want to use fluorocarbon, especially with long pauses, because it's just going to send the nose of your bait down. Monofilament, even though, I like to use at least 14 pound. You know, usually I go with 15 pound mono. And that diameter is like the perfect size that, that floats, still gives you great action. You can cast it really well. But even the line size will determine the buoyancy. And But I've got braid on right here. I've got 40 pound braid. So the braid floats. I like the no stretch. I went to a glass rod, it's really soft. So it still keeps the, the fish hooked up. but I like that straight braid connection where I can give that real hard mm -hmm. even on a long cast. What was your Xbox name? Was it Brush Hog 05? I had a couple, yeah. Topwater Pop R was one. Topwater Popper, Brush Hog 05. Brush Hog 05 was another. You had to pick an animal, let's call it a land animal, to transform into right now. And that's what you'd live out the rest of your life as. What would you do? A land-based animal? Yeah. Uh, this is a good boat talk right here. Yeah, yeah. Man, pro probably a cougar. A cougar? You go yeah. mountain lion? Here we go. Yes, sir. Here we go. Sign of life. Some sign of life. I was about to say, if there ain't one on this point, there ain't one in here. Oh yeah. Nice one. Yes, sir. Ooh, ah. risky. I feel like there, no? Nah, I got him. I got that big spinning setup. Nice fish. Quality unit. Spawned out, of course, but 
Got him on the dart. All right, my buddy, he's heading home. He's going to do dad things. Had, uh, had a few bites on the top top. Skunked. Could not land them, but. That zero's on me. It's the way she goes sometimes. It's the way she blows. Love you. Yeah. Be safe going home. I'll send you a picture of an eight pounder. Woo! It's getting toasty, y'all. Shirt is pretty sick. Available soon, GuggenSquad.com. Got the crappie, crappie infused apparel. How about it? Top water's done. Completely done. Well, Craig, if you're watching this right now, pretty impeccable timing on your part. I mean, please give the folks at home some some market tips because, uh, wow, you, you pulled out right before the crash, my guy. What we got in here? Nuggies. Beaver nuggies. Oh. Man, you remember Cheetos as a kid? That is, mm. I'm not sure I've ever had these before, but they're amazing. I'm gonna dig one more bag out of my tricks. We've got a worm that we're working on. True finesse style worm. And it is a tasty little nugget. Wabam. I've caught a few fish on it, just shaky heading, drop shotting, but. I've never wacky rigged it. This thing is gonna sink about as slow as a cigarette butt. Wacky rig, ready to go. A little different view for you guys. I mean, no weight in there. I could probably put a, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna put a tiny little weight in the head. Check these out. Little tubes. Put your little uh, your spike weights in there. Let's see if I got a, Oh, they're all the same size. This is it for me, guys. This is uh, fin as finesse as I am willing to go today. This is it. So I'm going to insert this, not nose, but about mid body. Let's see what these little tungsten nail weights can do. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, that's a tasty little biscuit right there. Okay, light line. I could tail, take this nail weight out, just go really lightweight worm. And uh, if you have a bright colored worm, like a white or a pink or a methylate, you can fish it on the surface and uh, they eat it like a top water. Floating worm. Floating worm style. Oh, there's a bite. Got him. I mean, that's what it takes. Holy cow. I didn't land him, but there he was. I mean, I fished this up and down with the sea rig, swim baits, weightless dart. Little one wants it, and he took my worm. Let's try another flavor. One of my favorite colors of all time for ET. Chartreuse Peppa. Got him. Pretty sure that was uh, a fry garter. Uh, just did the old visual cast on him. With the pinner, with the pinner worm. Uh, had him pinned with the pinner. Nice little healthy guy. This thing is dirty. I mean, this is a dirty sock right here. 
in the water. I don't know if you guys can see that. And the way that I've always rigged these style worms when I'm fishing them uh, weightless like this, weightless wacky, is I'll go like in the front third of the bait instead of right in the middle. So basically trying to get the halfway point, the balance point of the worm. So if you were gonna balance it weight wise, try to try to find that spot and it'll it'll fold over better, be a better presentation in the water instead of just like sinking head first. That can be good sometimes too, but I'm trying to I'm trying to keep it up on top and just twitch it. Massive bluegill beds. Massive bluegill beds. Oh, you can skip this thing really good too. Just have another one eat it. Oh, he dropped it like a little scoundrel. Oh God, he broke me off. Oh, I should have retied after getting stuck. God, that thing ate it in the dirt. Oh, little guy. Oh, you sucker. Spit my worm. See you, buddy. Oh, goodness. Little buddy. Oh, you booger, he spit my worm too. Oh, I might be able to get it. Bass swimming around it. Mm, save my worm. There's a little bit of cleanliness around this reed edge. There's one. I was gonna say there should be one right here. Okay, here we go. Buddy is on the run. Don't spit my worm. Ah, there we go. Got him. Decent little fish. We've made a little something here. We've made a little something out of it. Eat it. Oh, God, please. Buddy, buddy, buddy. And that's that's what we got. That's what we ended up with. Wow. Saw him slowly coming. That was a three pounder. Just got the absolute knot from Hades here. Oh my gosh. That's a that's a dun that's a dunski right there. Now the alternative that probably won't get near as many bites maybe none let's just throw a little sneaky frog up in there there's a big bass looking at it right now that, bite, that bass might be just straight up on a bed yep broke it off folks at home we are having a difficult time here okay regroup regroup wow
Wow. Okay. Let's just calm down. Had a big old fray right there. It's exactly where it broke. Oh, that was from driving down the highway, scratching on something. All right, our two key bed baits are broken off right now. Let's see. We have here a frog. Let's see if these fish want to play any games, any frog games. Yep, they want to play those frog games. 100% my friend Craig getting those frog bites this morning. That's what he was getting. He was getting those fry garters that don't really want to get it in their mouth. They just want to smack it. Okay, I think we've got a double pair up bed situation. There's three. Three on a bed. This is it, this is the day ender. Three fish on a bed. Oh yeah, two good ones in the bed right now. It's not smart behind a limb, not smart at all. Gotta play it right. I just need this fish to cooperate and not break off. That would be wonderful. Big one sees it. Get in here. I'm gonna well it for a second because there's a bigger one in there. Oh, I don't see it anymore. I disturbed the peace. Just don't see that other one. There's there's one more up here. I think this might have been the one that I broke off. Definitely catchable. <clears throat> Guys, I am flipping so good with the real. Oh my god, that was a big one. <sighs> that fish was a rocket. I don't know if it's gonna bite again, but oh my gosh. <sighs> Guys, I had the wood on that fish and it still just rocked me. That's unbelievable. That's unbelievable. I mean, I boom, put the juice on. Fish is still there. This is an angry fish. Turbocharge five. Oh man, I'm just I'm flipping so good with this. I don't know what I did to this gold series, but it is super super lubed. Oh, it has been a grind today. An absolute grind. I hate to end on a on a soggy note, not catching this fish, but I'm telling you, I've been just grinding out here. We went from awesome topwater action in the morning to getting no bites, having to switch to full finesse mode. Figured out something up shallow. Fish are really finicky, and usually your fish up shallow in the summer months, you know, after they've been tinkered with a little bit. They get really finicky. Found some random bed fish, which also happens in May. And um, I hooked a really good one. It got off. But I, I kind of had a, I fumbled. I fumbled the ball in the fourth quarter. What can I say? You know, can't be, can't be good every time. And a lot of times for me, it's not. That's why I cherish the days that are awesome. I would still love if you guys smash the like button as we get into this post spawn. The month of May, probably my favorite month to fish, just because you can kind of do a little bit of everything. You can get those topwater eats. You know, there's still some bed fish. Um, you know, the swim bait bite starts to get pretty good. Offshore starts to uh, appear. So it's really a great month to get out there and fish. But I'm gonna let this, uh, this bed fish go. And I actually saw, uh, I think what was the big one I was trying to catch. It came back and it, it got on a, a different bed. 
for a second. Probably looking for her boyfriend right here. Oh my gosh, what an angry. I wish all fish were as angry and aggressive as you. Wow. There's a nice fish right there, guys. Really nice fish. I, I still think the biggest one of the day, well, was the one that I lost right here. But the one that I, I hooked this morning on the top water that I actually got in, it was about five pounds. Bloody tail right here. This fish has been spawning. But I'm gonna let it go back to its bed, meet with her girlfriend, do the things. Thank you guys for tuning in to today's adventure. And I will see you on the next one. Get back. Get back to the girls. Make more babies.